Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. This is Andrew Turner, founder and host of the GNT Sessions podcast, and today we have an amazing guest, Mary Sankowska. How are you, Mary? Um, hi, I'm very good. Uh, thank you very much. It's morning here in New York. Oh, but you see, I'm in New York as well. <laughs> yeah, your Virtually. background is definitely. <laughs> <clears throat> so you see, I, I, there is a... As I mentioned to some of my other guests, there is actually a GNT Sessions helicopter. And what I do is to try and get close to my, obviously socially distanced, try and get close to my guests. Yeah. <laughs> right. What I do is I traverse the world. You see, it's all these different guests from different places in the world, you see. That's well, I definitely um, would wish for a view like that um, from where I'm sitting, but... <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a flag behind you? Um, it actually is. It actually is. <laughs> it's not mine, but um, the stripes yeah. of the stars. No, the embracing, <laughs> embracing the place you're staying at. Just start singing the Star, the star Spangled Banner now. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, great to have you on the show, by the way. And um, <clears throat> thank, thank you for giving us some time today. The 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 reason I wanted you on the show because actually was it's it's now almost a couple of years ago, but I know. You see, this is the thing where you do something and then you don't know who's in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember <clears throat> a few years ago, I was invited to a session in London and it was like a, um, a virtual masterclass before everybody went virtual. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I think you were in Amsterdam at the time. And you yeah. Came, you came on and you gave this masterclass on, on some interesting topics I think that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. Leadership. Um, that seems like ages ago, but uh, that's uh, indeed what happened. It was uh, one of the few um, virtual masterclasses, I think, uh, at, at that time that were happening at all. Um, it was an interesting concept. So, <clears throat> so obviously, that, that's um, only a few years ago, but I know you've uh, things have changed a bit since then. Or things have, your, 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 your course has changed and evolved and... Et cetera, et cetera. So I'm sure we're going to find out a bit more about that today. So I suppose my first question is, what gets you up in the morning? Um, well, that's a, that's already quite a deep question. Um, as for the first <laughs> one, uh, uh, so maybe maybe sort of um, just a brief introduction on the side of, of what I do. Um, so I am running Creative Brain, which is. Um, focusing on um, helping young professionals, entrepreneurs and graduate students, so basically young talent, um, to actually um, align, define and align with their purpose and then create a combination or define a combination of skills, um, mindsets and approaches that will enable them to progress through their career uh, faster, to develop faster. So my um, reason to get up in the morning is actually very aligned to that. And uh, it is to uh, be able to bring more equality to access to opportunities. Mm. Um, so every day that, uh, that we make a little bit push forward um, on that front, I think that's, um, that's something that gets me satisfied. That's interesting. So you, you, you've, already, <clears throat> you've already named one of the hashtags associated with this show already talented right <laughs> in GNT, gifted and talented yeah growth and technology and you, well, know, we that, you know once you've got a brain you you got to be called a talent so um you just need to become a little bit of a it's it's a little bit like becoming a super user of your brain you know you 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 always get one so if we all get one we just got to make sure how to, to make it work for us if possible so what, what you're saying is that your observations is that maybe not everybody does that? Um, not really that not everybody is using a brain, but more of, more of not everybody is making um, the, most the most out of it. So we really focus on um, maximizing the potential, you know, making everything that you can, that you have mm. at hand, work for you. I mean that's a huge, huge topic. Is it, is it, I mean, is, how did you get involved in that? Then what was the what, what's the 
because that's obviously you know working out. You're not you're not a, you're not a medical doctor, a brain a brain surgeon. Are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Um, so we, I think, like where it where it all started, it, it's been something that. I think has been on my mind and, and the mind of my co-founder probably for years. Um, but but really to get um, enough courage to act on it, it took us a while. Um, but uh, where it all comes from, I think, as a starting point for, for the discussion was that, you know, it takes on average about 15 years to get from um, early positions to um, you know experienced professional um, executive positions, mm-hmm. and the time that you are learning, um, it's really just incidental. You know, everybody says all of those nice and fancy words. You know, continuous learning. Um, we're future proving our work for us, this and that. But actually, you know, um, do we really do that? Um, and our answer was not. Um, we we actually don't. Uh, we have incidental learning. We um, we sort of award opportunities based on age. We award opportunities based on gender, fancy titles, uh, past uh, you know prestige companies you've worked for. That can go a long way. Um, <coughs> so where is the accurate assessment of somebody's potential? And where is that accurate and, and more equal access to opportunities? And I think that was the starting point for where the direction of creative brain is right now. So, so okay, so that's interesting. So you, you actually did you do did you did you experience something the the bias you you could say of non non of non appropriate selection. Is that what you you observed, or you? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily non appropriate selection, but I think there are a lot of instances, uh, just even from my experience, um, that that definitely support, uh, you know, that cause because um, I, I cannot even count number of times where um, I was judged uh, by my age rather than my skill set or right. my gender rather than, um, you know, the, the experience that I was bringing to the table. So mm-hmm. I think that um, people, we, we, we are so used to just judging by professional steps and by one sort of path. Everybody is, is expected, even going, you know, to the extent of like the society is telling you there is one path to success, there's one definition of success, and you should follow. And you go, you, you know, you go to the uni, you get a job, you climb the ladder, everybody's trying to do the same thing. Whereas at the same time, we're telling everybody, you're all different. You all have different skill sets, yeah. you all have different things, but yet you all try to fit in the same frame. Um, so I feel like there are a couple of, you know, factors that are sort of going into that, uh, into that problem. And, um, yeah, we just think it's, it's the high time that we change the approach to, uh, professional development. Interesting. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, you're on an interesting topic there because what, what you're saying is that there's a pattern that you've inherited from, I suppose, your parents. Yeah. Is this is this this is the path you're supposed to follow? Yeah, yeah. And the well, down generation, you can't get hands out down parents. generations. Yeah, it's your parents, it's your school, um, it's all of the career advisory uh, companies. You know, uh, they all tell you the same thing. And um, even if you think about that, like if if you take any any new research on what you know great how great looks like in leadership or um in you know what success looks like it will be mostly done based on what the leaders of fortune 500 companies may be um and i'm sorry to say but that's a story of of kind of white old men right that's what make them great that's what that would serve them over the years but the truth is that I feel that the, the, the society, the um, environment has changed and progressed so much that that definition of success and that formula for it is not relevant anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because, I, I mean, you know, so I'm, I'm an alumni of GE, General Electric, mm-hmm. which uh, this is back in the 90s, right? When Jack yeah. Walsh was there. Yeah. Neutron Jack. And... Um, the 
you know, they think they had this concept called five ones. Mm-hmm. So promotability and, uh, what was it promotability? It was achievements and promotability and it was a reverse index. Mm-hmm. So basically, if, is, is this the point where you'd be in a G meeting and you go, are you a five one? And if you're a five one, then you're what's called a high pot, mm-hmm. high potential. Yeah. And then you would get, you would get a, your kind of 18 month role and then you'd get rotated into another business because there's like 10 businesses in GE. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And you then get selected through the EMS process, employee management system process to eventually you get put on a, um, you know, they're kind of on Jack's desk and then they, yeah. they select people to be pulled out of their role and put into a, a more senior role. So it's, it's pretty, it was pretty impressive the way he did it. Yeah. Um, but they, I was just going to say on the diversity side, they were very, very aware, this is back in the 80s and 90s, that, um, that they had to embrace diversity. So, you know, actually looking at, you know, female leaders, male leaders, you know, what's the mix? What's the uh, backgrounds of people? So to address the point you're just saying about, you know, everybody was white male, Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, the selection is one thing. Like, you can select a 50-50 split of females, males, for example, or, you know, any other diversity um, sort of spectrum you pick. But all of those people to reach that place have been told to follow exactly the same path, have been told to follow the same rules of development. Right. And that's where we're saying is our mistake. So mm. I I believe that at that path on the development, before you're standing at that selection point, all of that time, you should be going by your success formula, not trying to fit necessarily in a predetermined, uh, predetermined, um, you know, path, let's say, or or framework. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to add to that, I think there is one aspect that maybe I haven't mentioned yet, but um, very important as well, um, is that how many skills, and I think the pandemic actually brings that, um, you know, to life like no other proof, how many skills that are crucial and very transferable that are making you future proof are actually developed in your personal life? Right. That is something that never enters or almost never enters the opportunity conversation. Mm. So your it's, like a really it's like a different corridor, isn't it? It's a different, different. Exactly. And we do not account for that. So I think that one way of equalizing access to opportunities is actually starting to account for more holistic development. Because mm. people who are, you know, not having access to fancy titles, fancy prestige Ivy, Ivy League schools, maybe mm. coming from different social backgrounds, mm. color, gender, age, um, they will not have those professional steps that make or break your CV. Yeah. But then if you actually account for um, for the holistic development, you might find that they have been through experiences that have allowed them to develop some of the absolutely crucial leadership skills that mm. people from other environments are still struggling to develop. Yeah. To develop their superpowers in, in a different area that they can apply to the business world. Correct. And I feel that's where the education or sort of development should be going even more. It's not it's not that much about the knowledge per se anymore. Because if you think about it, you've got the access to knowledge and information is, is so widespread. Mm. Um, the problem is making sense of that information, sort of proverbial, you know, connecting the dots. Um, those type of skills that are um, that are transferable, um, those are the ones that we should be focusing on. So you're saying basically the kind of competency framework is the yeah. kind of competencies, competencies that you could the traverse industries, traverse roles, traverse seniority. Yeah, that's that's what you say. That's, that's, that's what you. I think that- um, sorry, I I I just I, um, a thought. Like, if you think about like a, a career paths, they've also changed so much. I cannot imagine a person who is starting their career right now to to uh, nullify multiple times. To what? Sorry, to nullify. Uh, no, to not 
requalify. So, you know, the, the change of um, the sector, the change of, uh, you know, career change, those are the things that are happening uh, much more often than it was, you know, 10, yeah. 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, that concept of job for life when they were in like General Motors or exactly. GE, GE. I mean, some of the people that I worked with, excuse me, uh, got hiccups, <laughs> 40 years ago. Yeah. I mean, my dad. Is 30, 30, odd, 30 odd years ago. 30 odd years ago. Um, yeah. uh, well, some people are still at GE. Some yeah. people are still at, you know, SAP, where I worked as well, the tech company. Some people are still at Tesco, you know, decades later. Yeah. So, I mean, my dad is working for a Polish um, electricity company, and he's been there, I think last year was 55th anniversary wow so you know a job for life um never even thought about changing it probably so you, are you seeing that, that you you believe that that's changing now oh it, it, there's, a, there's a shift happening um i think the shift should be happening <laughs> i think um i think we should um take control of our own development and that is the only way to really, um, to really change things around. Because um, if you think about that, you know, um, companies in an HR department, what would you have? Maybe um, one person covering about six to eight hundred employees. How are you able physically? Even it's not that you know they are not doing a good job. Even they, even if they invest thousand percent if they energy so hard in it Mm -hmm. physically it's impossible to be able to provide the amount of attention quality um and and kind of dedication to ensure each of those employees is reaching their potential each of them have their formula for success defined each of them is bringing to life the purpose by which they are living so if we are not going to take care of that ourselves on our own front, um, we'll always be struggling with things like, you know, happiness, contentment, um, accelerated growth. Um, mm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I suppose it's, it's... Are you really talking about the situation where... Well, I suppose, that, you know, my observation in large organisations is HR is usually a consultative HR model these days. It's not the line role, yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. line, the line. So the line manager is then, I suppose, accountable or responsible for supporting that direct report to yeah. to help them with their what I would call PDP, yeah, personal yeah. development plan, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously they would work on you know you know what are the, what are the strengths and what are the what we call edges, yeah. Yeah. The things that they need to develop and and, and reinforce and emphasize and amplify. Um, and that's what I used to do as a you know line manager when I was working in big businesses, working with my t- team. And then you'd also work out um, in one particular business, uh, retail business. Then we had this thing called the steering wheel, which, which is basically like the quadrants of a balanced scorecard and all the KPIs. And then yeah. you work through with with that individual and say, okay, how how is my role going to impact the, those uh, KPIs? You know, so you get that kind of strategic alignment to their role. So that's the way we used to do it to try and, well, and that's help, help people develop and actually help people, you know, work on things that are important and impactful. Yeah, and that's all great, but uh, there are a couple of things that I, I'm, I'm missing because, first of all, it's it's not necessarily allowing you to bring your own purpose to life. Um, that's something right. that mm-hmm. really can make or break the engagement. The, it has an impact on your productivity, on your happiness, on your satisfaction. Um, so that's one thing. Second, you know, the concept is fantastic. But if every line manager would dedicate enough time to it, and I'm sure that that you also know that there are oftentimes other priorities. You know, it's a it's a it's a meeting. Sometimes in some companies, some some companies obviously do it very well, but some companies it will be just you know a performa type of meeting. We we do it because we got to do it. Um, so I was going to go into the emotions piece. Exactly, and then the third piece is sort of it's incidental. 
you know, it, you you get to it maybe once a year, once a quarter, um, every time you got your, your check-in, right? Mm-hmm. But what do you do to ensure, where is the tool, where is the support system to ensure that at any given point you are focused, you are targeted in your development, you know what's next, you know um, how your definition of success is evolving, because that's another thing, you know. Um, We oftentimes um, pick kind of, you know, what we think a success looks like to us um, when we're in our 20s, um, or even earlier, and then we try to stick to it for 30, 40 years. But if you think about it, all of those years, you've been learning things, you've been broadening your perspective, you've been adding different mm. points of view, Dif- your, your priorities might have shifted, your values might have changed, evolved, but you're not applying that to your definition of success. So you're outdating yourself, mm. the success formula for yourself as well. Yeah, I think the one thing that you said a bit earlier this is before that, which I, I agree with, it's, it's a bit like the there's like a Chinese wall. Maybe no thing is Chinese wall. There's a wall. Between, <laughs> yeah. between, there's a wall between your your um, you know the, the thing I said about that retail example is it's a bit like the the purpose is about the role and the impact on the business purpose. It's yes. not you know how how do you balance that reflects it on your personal life purpose and then make sure you've got some alignment on that and that's kind of um it's it's switched on a very interesting topic (laughs) yeah um where is to to your point where is the support for that where's the support where's the dialogue for that yeah Um, because you you know and how you know does, does does every line manager look at it from a holistic purpose or does he look at how is he going to get his team to work on the things that are going to make sure we deliver things and improve the yeah. business? Sorry, <laughs> and um, or um, and you know how does that this is the kind of the piece around the, the, the other side of the wall about mm-hmm. their personal personal life purpose? You know, people just go, I wouldn't say talk to the hand, but they go, okay, that's your that's your separate that's how you're out of hours thing, yeah, yeah, how does that fit? <laughs> How that's why we have that now with like the with with employee engagement with uh, you know all of those things they are coming because um, people oftentimes for many years um, have never reflected on what their purpose is. Mm. Um, not to mention being able to find a raw company team that allows you to bring that forward. Mm. Um, and then again, um, a lot of the things that we're developing that are crucial for our progression are happening in our profession, uh, in our personal lives. So how are you bringing that to the table in all of those conversations, whether it's with a line manager, your performance review or a job interview, you know, or even simply discussion with your parents when you're young, trying to convince them you're going to open your own company. You know, it's it's it kind of at each level. Um, those are the elements that we consistently keep missing. So, are you? So, is is is, is this what your mission? Is this what you would describe your mission as? Is it basically both sides of the wall? Um, yeah, I think we. What we really strive to do, obviously, apart from from our vision of of really making that change towards equalizing the access to opportunities, how we are envisioning to do that is to be able to more accurately assess potential. Right. um, To create, um, ultimately then, based on that, to translate that into your support kind of control center. So each, every individual can have one place where they go, where it's not only, you know, tracking the holistic development, but it's based on that assessment, but it's also allowing you for, and kind of proactively nudging you to reevaluate what's your definition of success, reconnect to your purpose, make sure that, you know, there is that focus zone and at any given point, 
whether you feel stuck or don't know what, what to do next, you can bring yourself back. You can recenter. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um. So, it's, it's for the quick question is is what was the what's your what's your personal backstory? What 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 is you know you obviously it looks like you're working in a very interesting space and you've obviously identified a, a problem and a gap. Yeah. yeah. Of how mm-hmm. how this has not been addressed properly before. So I presume your mission with creative brain, you said, is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah, is to, is to address head on this 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 situation. Is that is that what you're right. working on there? Yeah. yeah, that's what we're working on. Yeah. And what um you you so I, I mean is your background? Are you kind of like a HR specialist or a leadership coach or what, 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 what was the what was some, what was the what was the thing that happened um you know what what was your backstory that that's, that made you come to the point of identifying this situation is it something you can explain to the audience yeah absolutely so um actually i think that well first of all i think that um i had my fair dose of um trying to prove the system wrong. (laughs) So um, that I I moved out from my home country when I was um, 18. And uh, um, I I kind of come from a very conservative small village in Poland, um, where, you know, that kind of definition of success is very early on established in your life. And you're just supposed to follow. Um, And I very much did not like the idea. Um, So I feel like that was sort of the first step really. Um, I obviously did not realize it at the time, but um, I think that that has shaped me quite a, quite a bit um, looking back now. Um, so, so that, that would be one thing. Second would be, um, I actually came into um, coaching very early on. Um, so uh, the first time that I, um, made my sort of first step in the certifications, I was just about 21. Um, So being, you know, in a space of um, executive coaching at that age, you get a lot of um, question marks, I guess, of, uh, you know, what is the, the young person doing there and how can you coach me? And uh, I had the privilege to work with um, um, a really, um, really good mentor, um, and my partner in Sing- Singapore. So um, after I my, made my first coaching certifications and opened Creative Brain, uh, with a very different focus at first, looking at um, female uh, leadership development, um, um, we partner up with the Coaching Academy in Singapore, and um, there we kind of get access to um, really top management of international uh, corporations. So working at that age in a setting of executive coaching um, made me realize um, that first of all, as you're becoming a coach and you're going through that journey yourself at such a young age, I think it just made my own professional journey so much more effective, um, so much more targeted, focused. Um, I felt some of the years that I was with a lot of effort, a lot of work, but I was able to progress much faster um, than I would have without it. So for I saw on myself the impact of that. And then the second piece is the amount of um, attention and the level of personalization of that um, support system for the top levels of corporates. Um, as opposed to, you know, young people have access to. And that was a little bit like, imagine how much more the young people can do, how much faster and further they can get if they would have access to the same support systems. So I feel like those two Mm -hmm. came together um, in it. So that's interesting. So so what you're saying is that you got exposed to this executive level coaching side when you were quite young, but what you also saw was the gap or the the big white space because people at the executive level were, were being coached and getting support. But everybody else earlier on in, the, in their career or their path, their journey was not getting any support at all. 
it's not even I'm about the getting the support or not. It's more about the level of personalization and the kind, the kind of like personal attention. Now, if you work with the, uh, on a CEO succession or you work with an, um, the first 100 days um, um, with a CEO or any other kind of engagement at that C-suite level, you are focusing on that one person. You're trying to find the elements that will make them thrive in that particular setting, that particular context with their particular strengths, weaknesses, and all the other things, right? right? Now, the lower you go, the more generalized approach you apply. Right. Um, and I feel like the devil is in the details. That's really what makes that difference of being able to accelerate the speed mm-hmm. of your progress versus not. Interesting. It's, you know, it's, 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 yeah, I can, I can relate to your. Um, I can relate to your what you're doing uh, a lot because I think uh, there's a there's a, there's a there's a dire need for addressing that that gap. Yeah, and it's now uh, adds to that you know the layers of the gender uh, the the generations sorry the the genders as well. Mm. Uh, add the layer um, of, you know, how dynamic are the changes right now and um, how quickly that the, sh- the shelf life of a skill is now about two years. Really? So, you know, if, if you apply all of those layers on top of that basic concept, you just see how massively an opportunity is missed, mm. um, how much more efficient, effective and, and ultimately happy um, we can make um, um, our workforce. And... I've, got, I've got a question for you now, though. So, okay. so, how <laughs> much, so there's, there's, there's roughly between seven and eight billion people on the planet, right, on Earth. Yeah. So how many people are you going to impact with your mission? That is a very good question. Um, I would hope that uh, there will be a point where um, where every single person in the world would have a possibility to access an opportunity. Mm. Fantastic. I'm not saying everybody should be awarded them and not everybody should be, you know, um, I think like that's also a very important distinction. You should have access to opportunity, but that does not take away all the work you've got to put in to, to make it work, you know, to to take advantage of the opportunity but the access to it should be the same i think i think a billion people by 2030 what about that is that a b is that a b hag <laughs> well let's take it on you know a couple of years from now yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> we, should it. we should we could we could diarize it yeah mm. september 2030 yeah yeah hi mary how are you doing? Hi, I'm and doing look, she great. Blew, she blew the number. Five <laughs> billion. What? Yeah, billion people. Everybody going through their own, you know, um, development control centers. I would love that. There you go. See? Yeah. Where there's not so, so, uh, Tara, who came on the show a few months ago, um, mm-hmm. she works for Adobe, and um, she has this concept called sticky toffee pudding. Okay. She basically says, "Find your sticky toffee pudding." So basically, it's find. It's a bit like Simon Sinek. Find you know, find your why. Yeah. Yeah. It's called sticky toffee pudding. I said, uh, well, "It's a bit bit tempting to have sticky toffee pudding," but anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> very tasty. But but actually, with the session I had with her, I worked with her in a telco, and uh, you know, I said to her that uh, so I challenged her to say that she should be a CEO of a tech company uh, within the next ten years. And she goes, "Oh, you set me a big target now." No, because because she's got she's got very she's developing quite a holistic, um, mm-hmm. you know, experience and, and diversity of experiences that that would round her into kind of like being a CEO. Uh, mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I kind of think I think I surprised her a little bit by that discussion, <laughs> <laughs> like live on the episode. But anyway, <laughs> um, so um, 
So I suppose, yeah, so it's, uh, th- thanks for sharing your, your, your also your personal story. So it's interesting, you, you, you obviously made a, a decision quite early on, you know, in your teens, yeah? What, what, was, yeah. what, what was the trigger for that? You know, did you, you just wake up in the morning and go, I'm leaving Poland? I mean, you, you know, what, what happened? That's quite, Actually, quite, yeah, quite in a... that particular story, that was pretty much it. Um, okay. I mean, I've always wanted to, to live abroad and, to, you know, kind of um, travel and, and get to know something different than, than my village. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. I, I, I moved out quite abruptly and... Uh, um, I I lived a little bit in Germany trying to earn money for my degree. Then I moved to the Netherlands, did my bachelor's. Um, I lived in Asia for a bit. That's where I kind of put my first steps with with coaching, um, kind of proper education. Um, moved back to the Netherlands, London somewhere on the way. Um, ended up doing um, my master's across um, London, uh, Dubai and Boston. Oh, nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel that uh, a lot a lot of the moves that I've made have been uh, taking on what was coming and turning mm-hmm. it into something that fits to my plan. Right. Um, so do you have a 10 year plan then? No. Okay. No, I think that, te- you know, talking about 10 years, that, that, that's almost impossible right no, now. No, I'm just, I'm just really talking about five talking about. Is, is so tricky, you know? I don't um, know what I'm doing next week. What you about? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think I have a, I have a vision and I have, you know, that purpose is something that grounds me. Um, that's something, you know, like a North star that you can, you could, you can mm. follow, but, uh, I don't think a specific plan is, is something that, that would really make it more efficient, um, or optimal, um, for me. Um, but funny story, um, for example, how I got into coaching is actually, um, you know, as a, I was, I was at the time, uh, living in London, um, through my bachelor's degree and, um, uh, I was supposed to, um, do an internship in real estate and I, um, kind of got to, to a branch, um, that just lost, um, a branch manager. And, you know, like a young person that, you know, thinks, oh, I'm doing, you know, a business degree. I know everything right now about business. Like, let me lead people, right? Um, So I literally begged the owner of the um, franchise to give me a chance for a month before he finds um, a replacement to, you know, try and be the branch manager because I've got that many ideas and, you know, that many ways of fixing everything that I've noticed so far could be working better, right? And bear in mind that um, it's like me being about 20, having no previous working experience, (laughs) really, Um, just going out of, you know, your first year at uni um, and uh, working in real estate in London where... uh, it's quite high pressure. Entire team, yeah, entire team was um, well above um, uh, in in their years of experience, well above my age. Um, so you know, uh, people with twenty, thirty years on the job experience, and then me kind of uh, saying it's like, yes, now I'm going to make you a better team. <laughs> and, um, it it sounds kind of like uh, silly and funny when I look at it b- back now. I feel that um, I'm not sure that I would be having enough courage, maybe you know. Um, Sounds like you, so, there's, a, there's a pattern here, though, isn't there? There's a pattern. So how, <laughs> how, so how did you get on in that 30 days then? Oh, goodness. So I actually, we didn't look for, for the new branch manager in the end. Um, it was very challenging. I very, very early on realized that I definitely do not know how to lead people. I definitely do not know how to, you know, um, fix all the problems that I've noticed uh, we are having in the branch. Um, but um, I went back to the uh, branch manager and I said, I'm still up for the challenge. 
I just kind of realized I need a little bit more support than what I expected. And he sent me to, um, he suggested a coaching um, uh, uh, Mm-hmm. And I remember the moment I was sitting in that room in London doing my first ever coaching course. I did not even know coming to the room what coaching was. Um, apart from, you know, sports coaching. So I've actually done um, kayaking for seven years back back in Poland. So coaching mm-hmm. as a concept was pretty much sports related to me at the time. And mm-hmm. sitting in that room, I honestly, that was the moment I can pinpoint pinpointed so accurately I think that was the moment when I was like this is exactly what I want to be doing for the rest of my okay. life okay okay so um, that's like the the light bulb moment on top of your head a little bit yeah mm-hmm. and uh, um in particular kind of uh, trying to be back and apply that to uh, to one of the situations so we had one team member um at that branch that um Apart from the, the age difference, the experience difference, there was also a cultural layer to it. Um, and um, addressing underperformance with all of that was quite tricky. And I really saw coaching working in that moment. And uh, we are actually still friends still now. So so he still reaches out sometimes. That's good. That's good. So you can... Chris, this thing, this thing, this thing about leadership and this thing called fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. You can be the you can be a pointed leader, but you've got to actually work out how to exactly. you know cement and build a team, build the you know build the psychological safety, build the build the emotional bond. You know, yeah. it's it's that kind of you know build that strong team spirit. And um, no, that's funny. That's funny the way you bring it because it, it from from how you describe it right now is I completely agree and on the same page. But if you look how we assess leaders, again, mm-hmm. we're missing so much. Um, so if you think about that, all of the assessments of the leader are individual centric. When we are saying that actually being a good leader is about facilitating the success of your people. Mm-hmm. So again, mismatch right there. Well, yeah, it's this thing about, well, I don't know if it's the thing, is it right? The servant leader, you know, there's kind of that concept of, you know, you, you're there to, to, to help, to help, you know, I don't know, to help the, you can't do it all yourself. I mean, my, yeah. my, 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 my funny story, right, is, um, mm-hmm. is a quick story, um, is literally I was, uh, when I was at Tesco, the retailer, I had a, a, a store manager uh, got allocated to my team, and he'd been in, in a store manager for 40 years. And he was, a, he was a kind of from the east end of London. He was a very down to earth kind of guy. Yeah. And, and he said, Andrew, he said, you know, he swore basically, he said, you know, da 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 da, all about this topic, retail stores and stuff like that. I, did, I didn't know mm-hmm. about it. He didn't know that. And then he said, but I know. And da, 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 nothing about mobile technology and all that kind of stuff and telecoms, right? Mm-hmm. I said, well, but that's how, that's how it's going to be. It's going to be a beautiful partnership, isn't it? Because we're both going to, it's going to be symbiotic. We're both going to learn from each other, yeah? And then the bond you build with that, because we were kind of like, we'd, we'd have each other's, you know, perspective and we'd, we'd help each other out. Mm-hmm. But um, it was a very high entertaining. I used to have fireside chats with him and stuff like that. So, and you know, but I, but I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't I was his line manager, but I wouldn't consider him being his line manager because he was like, you know, it's this thing about this, how do you have this 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 bond and this relationship of uh, just trying to, you know, get make make a difference, I suppose. It's uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. So um so how so, 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 so I suppose in the you know, the, you touched on some really, really interesting in to, interesting topics here, Mary. I, I appreciate you you sharing that stuff. I suppose one of the things I was going to ask you about was mm-hmm. so I have this concept called peaks and valleys. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I speak to people, they go, "Oh yeah, yeah, my my you know my journey was peak, 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 peak." Right? I go, "Hmm, really?" <laughs> Mine yeah. was peak, tro- valley, peak, valley, valley, peak. Yeah. Yeah. So, any any stories you'd like to share around that or thoughts? Um, I think that, yeah, well, first of all, I cannot imagine 
a story or a path to success that goes through just peaks. I think the valleys are just so important because ultimately um, it's, it's something that derails our brain finally to stop and reflect and reevaluate. And I feel like it's so much more difficult to proactively um, take that action when everything's going well. Mm-hmm. That is also why, you know, uh, if you translate it back to a business concept, a lot of market leaders sometimes, you know, go completely, um, get, get completely driven to the ground because they've been always the best. They've never reevaluated, right? So I feel like humans, we just have that bias of like, if everything's going well, why to question it? All right, yeah, yeah. Um, right. So, so, la, 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 la. I, I don't want to know about the. I don't want to know about the the big yeah, yeah. over there. Yeah. Whatever's happening, you know, like I'm on my track, like, uh, and and um, that's something very natural. It's just one of the biases that 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 we fall mm. into, and um, that's why I feel that the valleys are um, kind of like a natural defense mechanism, almost. You know, like mm. it will actually make you stop make you think yes. uh, and reevaluate. Uh, um, I think the, the path to stress is never a straight line. It's, it's, it's more looking like a heartbeat, if you can compare it to something. You know? <laughs> um, and um, yeah, stories. Well, hmm. I think that valleys have if if you're making me think about it right now, valleys have a function of a peak. Mm. Um, so it's an inv- example, inverse peak. It's an inverse peak. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It, <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, again, best proof. You know. Well, do, you, do you fail? Do you fail or do you learn? <laughs> yeah. Um, so so I feel like I, I don't really think of of those valleys as like um, down points, really but really learning points. And um, it doesn't have to be a learning, you know, in terms of the knowledge necessarily. It can be, it can be a learning in terms of realizing something for yourself. Um, for example, for me, um, I had one story where, okay, um, I, had, I, I had one story where um, one of the first ones that I think installed much of the spirit that uh, I still kind of uh, use as my fuel. Mm. Uh, when I was in um, beginning high school, um, I really wanted to be a lawyer. And um, my family does not come from, um, fr- from those circles. So what I've been told like continuously almost every single day by my parents that you cannot pick the subjects in your high school that will be leading to that lawyer thing because we don't have connections. We're not from that class. We're not mm-hmm. going to, like, you're not going to make it. You can get a degree. You're not going to cut it through the network to actually make it work. Right. So I got so annoyed at some point. And I'm type of a person, when you tell me you can't do it, I'm like, I'm going to show you I can. <laughs> so, um, I honestly, I definitely, I definitely I get the vibe up. about that. I definitely get the vibe about that. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of woke up one day and I was like, um, okay, let me verify that. So I <laughs> opened my laptop, I wrote a really long email describing my grades, my passion, this and that. And I sent it to every single practice in the next big city. All right. Um, law practice, asking them, are my parents right to say that I will never make it? And you know, and you got you got that, ten you got ten job offers then, I presume. No, <laughs> but two two practices out of all of the emails replied. It was you know, in all fairness, it was a very long email, um, so it probably would take people half an hour to kind of go <laughs> through it. So um, you know, no hard feelings. But the two that came back, one of them just you know wished me good luck, but the other one. Um, actually, um, I think had such a, such an impact on, on how I saw what's possible and what's impossible mm-hmm. really at that very early age. Um, 
they actually said uh, the 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 person that was leading the practice said like look that is not true like if if you want to make it you can make it it will be really hard and you know the plans that you're describing a hard push you know but um if you want come have a conversation i'll show you around the practice we can talk a little bit more about what it will take it will be a hard journey so it was you know nothing like you know if you want you can make it yes 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 right it was not just a cheerleading kind of thing it was mm. like come we'll walk through all of the things you will have to walk through um and that was that was that meant a world and more, you know, honestly. Um, I actually did have that conversation. Uh, we had, uh, um, the person became quite a mentor to me for, for a period of time. And I think that that had such an impact. Great. Um, yeah. So I, I think like that, that's probably one of the, the, the peak-ish stories uh, or like, you know, well, it's like, I mean, you combine both, and you you kind of talked about the, 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 yeah. the, the, there was kind of like a, a mindset thing of potentially shifting you into a valley, when actually, yeah. it was, but you you kind of ignored the valley. You said, "I'm not going down the valley. I'm up the feet. I'm on the peak." So that's, yeah. good, that's a good story. Yeah. It also, I think, also just speaking to you as well, it also shows that that because of the the time that that happened, obviously in your life, mm-hmm. it, it's obviously started to shape your, well, I would say, nothing's impossible kind of mindset. Yeah. I actually have a mantra of like, um, don't play if it comes from, I think it comes from around the same time. I can't really recognize anymore how I came about that sentence, but it's stuck in my head. Um, It's sort of like, if it depends on you, there's no way it cannot happen. Mm. Um, Which is, 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 have you heard the story that John Maxwell, you know, John C. Maxwell, you know, the yeah. you know, this leadership quote, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, he just, <laughs> so in, in a number of his books, so with one of his books in particular, he says, what you should do is every, every morning and every night, you should just say, you know, like the Nike thing, just do it. Yeah. Say it 50 times in the morning, 50 times at night. It's like, you know, no procrastination, just do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. take action. So that's yeah, good. So thank you. Thanks for sharing that. So in terms of um, your, I suppose, you know, we're on the G&T Sessions podcast, right? So we talked a lot about growth. We talked about your journey, we talked about your personal journey, your business journey so far um, to a billion, or is it five billion people being impacted? Yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, the, the T side of it, uh, you know, the, the, in, this, in this way, tech, right? So yeah. what, 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 what is your, would you consider, do you use tech? Have you got an appreciation of tech? Are you kind of quite conversant in it, or are you just kind of use it for what you're doing in your in your life? What, what, what's the kind of relationship? Um, yes, 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 definitely uh, appreciation for it, and definitely seeing it as something that can be a vehicle for us to, you know, make those changes much faster. Um, so we are at the moment uh, building um, a digital solution that will incorporate all of the aspects I've been talking about. Okay. So that holistic measurement of potential, um, creating your learning ID that will evolve together with you and be sort of a statement to that potential at any given point in time. Um, a worldwide benchmark kind of thing, worldwide standard. We want to benchmark, we, we want everybody to start benchmarking themselves against themselves. Um. Mm. We want um, the purpose to be embedded at the core of what your structure and path looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, We want you to be able to have a place that will give you that personalized attention and help you figure out the right combination of skills um, mindsets, approaches that make you thrive, you personally, taking into consideration your definition of success, your assessment of a holistic kind of assessment of potential, your context, mm-hmm. um, and your purpose, and make sure that um, 
you have that support system at any given point to recenter yourself and move forward faster. More. So it becomes, so it becomes your PP, as I would call it, your potential passport. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that you call it this way because actually our community, which we are just launching beginning of October. Oh. So it's an exciting time for us. Yeah, it really is. Um, um, we uh, we have just kind of finished off with um, a social campaign called Wake Up Call, where we okay. encouraged everybody yeah, to really kind of take a hard look in the mirror and be like, are you in charge in your own development? Do you really feel in <laughs> What is your purpose? Have you thought about that? Is that something you're bringing into life? So we've just finished that and we're really looking um, at, at that community. We actually call it Flight. Oh, really? All right. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, that was a... You that was a yeah, but you see, if you, call it a pass, if you call it a passport, yeah? Then at well, least that's pretty really dynamic, though. So... <laughs> That's not really dynamic, though, right? No, but you um, see, with, 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 with what's going on at the moment, then, you know, where, where do you fly to? Yeah? You can go by car. You can walk. You can go by kayak. Yes, that is very true. But we're talking about accelerating your potential. We need a fast uh, means of transportation. Ah, okay, and, okay. Uh, at the same time, I think that, you know, travel as a metaphor to, you know, Broadening your perspectives, um, uh, you know, really. So you, need, you need to launch on a on a Boeing Dreamliner, then. Yeah. Oh, that would be that would be. You know, re- realize your that potential. Realize <laughs> You're your listening potential. to us. Well, actually, one of the one of the one of the ex CEOs that works in one of the businesses that I worked in at GE, he he became the CEO of Boeing after he left GE. So he's not there anymore, Jim McNerney, but he's a fantastic guy. Um, well, you see, they, that's what they say. We're they always like two connections away from anybody in the world, right? So I guess I just found my path. <laughs> yeah, you see, you could do an inaugural flight. You see, you get all yeah. your tickets on the inaugural flight, a dreamliner. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I'm getting creative there. That's interesting. That's interesting. No, no. Oh, well, so, so we're just we're on the verge of this coming to coming to, coming to everybody. Is that right? Yeah, we really are. We really yeah. are. Like it's like weeks before the launch. Good grief! Um, I'm on it. Yeah. So, so we're preparing a really big conference, virtual conference in January, where okay. it will all come to life. Right, um, right. And for now, we are um, uh, we are basically um, through our community building the community piece. We want to give people access to really guide us in those final stages of, of development. Um, you know, of of the concept of of testing things, of making sure that it works for you. Because that's the thing. It cannot be a next thing where you've got to input information or the next management system. No, like I I know also for myself, I'm really busy. I want things to work for me. So if it's just like a next thing to, you know, that I have to take care of, it's just another burden. It's something that, you know, got to live together with you, like be there for you. So we're really taking that piece seriously um yeah and it, and it's all it's all happening as we speak so um, oh, um with a fantastic team truly global um that is bringing it to life wow well, yeah. well i mean at the end of this episode obviously you can tell people a bit more about how to find out a bit more about that um sure. but what, what, you know so uh, well i mean in the in the text so it sounds like you actually are building your own tech platform or the a, a tech platform to allow people to get access to this type of type of yeah. uh, you know thinking right. yeah and you, what you've right. created yeah it's yeah, fantastic it will, it will be able to to help you get that holistic assessment find out that purpose ensure that your success formula is working for you and it's personalized at the level it would have been if you are one of the top CEOs of, you know, Fortune 500 companies. Wow. And, and kind of grow and evolve with you. 
Um, so we're looking into deep learning models at the moment. Oh, really? Okay. Where, we are, yeah, where we are kind of um, seeing the, the real opportunity to, to make it something outstanding. And mm. uh, I think, uh, yeah, that, that's why I said I, I see technology as a vehicle that can get us faster and further um, in what we want to achieve. Wow. Tech entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So, so, so yes, yeah, so, so this leads into one of my final final things I was going to ask you about was about, um, you know, given your journey so far, which has been, you know, it's been great for, you, for me to go through that with you today. It's been a fantastic um, explanation of what you've been through. And, um, it, you know, if, if anybody's listened to this episode from, you know, at, you know out there in, in, in the world, what, what would be some pearls of wisdom, you know, so that you, you've learned over your time on this earth that you would, you know, if you were talking about to your younger self, these are kind of the top yeah. things you should, you should consider as thinking about and, 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 and sharing. You know, something that I've learned actually not that long ago, or maybe I can't even say I've learned it yet, but um, I heard a piece of wisdom that I think is, is so valuable um, is that we oftentimes look for, for things we want to find externally when the place to find them is actually internally. Right. Um, and I'm not referring to, to a setting of a company, but more of your personal growth. Mm. Um looking for things like happiness and contentment, looking for things like satisfaction and purpose. Um, I think that's, that, that would be like one thing that, that one of my very good friends told me not too long ago. And um, I'm really grateful to, to, to have that in my, in my mind now. Um, second thing, I think is just... how to word it um allow yourself allow the room for your definition of success to evolve as well to change allow the room for yourself to change um if you're not going to you know it, it's much better to change um and be holistic and and be present and really purpose driven than wake up you know 20 years on the job and find yourself unhappy and not knowing why you're doing what you're doing thanks for sharing those those pearls of wisdom i think they're, they're really thoughtful ones and really ones that people should should obviously look at and think about um i suppose you know to, 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 i suppose to finish off the episode today i mean one of the things i wanted to you know, given the kind of the, the thing we, we traversed in our flight or our passport, our global, <laughs> global tour, is, um, you know, because of the topics you work in, I think are incredibly useful for lots of people, um, you know, young and old, um, and, even you know, wherever they are on their journey. So I suppose my, my biggest question would be about how do they find more out, find more out about what you're working on um, and the great stuff you were talking about there, because it sounds like it's, it's, it's going to be pretty... You know, it's going to be something new that comes onto the into the world and um, finding it's out going about to be it. Big. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. What would um, be your guidance on that? Um, yes, yeah, so you can absolutely find us on um, social media. Um, so for Instagram, my underscore creative brain, um, that would be the handle. And then um, I would definitely encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn because uh, that's ultimately where our community will be sitting um, beginning October. And we are, as we speak, preparing for launching a self-awareness challenge 14 day trip to self-awareness town if you will um uh, starting next monday um 21st september we'll be continuing that on to october uh, with a personal development challenge so you'll find all of the toolkits and other things we've got games and interactive Ooh. stuff 
Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be boring. You know, it doesn't have to be in a format of a coaching session to really gain results. Um, so for that, um, go on to LinkedIn. You can find me by my name um, and you can find Creative Brain under Creative Brain. So what's the, what's the website then? What, what is, have you got a website as well? Or? Uh, yeah, that's mycreativebrain.eu. Um, but honestly, uh, majority of things and all the good stuff that's what you'll find on LinkedIn and Instagram. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's, that's yeah. great. I really, I really appreciate your time today. It's a fantastic uh, episode, and uh, I do really Thank cherish the time to speak to, speak with you. I think you know you've got some really good stuff coming down. It's it's it's, it's really exciting, isn't it? It's, um, Thank you for having me. It is absolutely exciting. Uh, you know, to the extent where I can't sleep anymore. <laughs> 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 just waiting for it to get get live yeah <laughs> well I wish you all the best with the launch and obviously um you know I'll, we'll be posting this episode out on the on the uh internet on the internet uh yeah. putting this on youtube putting this on all the audio platforms so people can listen to it and obviously people can pick up your stuff and and follow it from there so Fantastic. Have a look. Know, and then we can also share it um yeah of course yeah 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 yeah, yeah of course yeah so thank you for the time today. That was yeah, Mary, Mary's iPhone. No, sorry, Mary <laughs> <Sendowski. laughs> Um from My Creative Brain. Yeah. And yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.